Initial contact with Italian forces has proven encouraging. Though our own forces remain very weak, the decision has been made to push harder and mount a more direct raid. Your objective is to seize Fort Capuzzo. This fort is one of the notable Italian bases on the frontier and lies just a few kilometers inside the Libyan border. Intelligence has not yet given us a complete picture of the fort's defenses, so you must reconnoiter carefully and with a particular concern for their artillery. It is their best arm, and destroying it quickly will go a long way to ensuring victory. While some of us may suspect that the Italians are not the all-conquering legionnaires Mussolini purports them to be, you must not underestimate them in this battle. They know as well as we that Capuzzo sits astride one of the key invasion routes and must be held if Commando Supremo intends to mount a credible threat to Egypt. Welcome back to the second episode of a Panzer Corps Allied Corps DLC playthrough. Now let's just get to it though. Now we have the Cruiser Mark 1 available as a new equipment in this scenario here. And we are uh, assaulting this um, base here. This camp. We can't see the full extent of it yet, but uh, we'll get to that. So, between the episodes, you might notice a little bit of discrepancy on uh, experience on units and such, because when I'm done with recording an episode, I have to go back and finish the last turn to start the next episode uh, for continuity reasons, which messes with continuity of experience, but all in all, I think it will make for better episodes. Either way, we're gonna replace the casualties on this one, I still have uh, 115 experience, 123 on this, and uh, 52 on this. Now what we're gonna do, because um, these are pretty weak, after we hit F7 to bring up this tab, you can see fairly weak attacks, um, the, uh, the uh, Rolls Royce recons here are stronger, we're gonna hit D and disband this to get back the prestige that we and uh, well that it is worth we're gonna lose the experience in doing so that we have acquired on it which is why i shouldn't have put as much as i did into it but oh well could have probably done the previous scenario with only the two uh, rolls royces and been better off now however i'm going to get one artillery here with a quad so it can move around it will only move one tile per turn if you do not have them uh, attached to something to transport them around with so like this and we're gonna rename that to uh first mod Art. Uh, short for first motorized artillery. I'll rename these guys to first recon. And the reason that I like to rename the units is because these uh, names are pretty long. Don't really give me that much, if that makes sense. And I like to have like A3, D5 in the end of uh, my unit names. Which is why I like to keep them short so I can at a quick glance just see uh, as I get battle heroes what kind of buffs the uh, unit is getting from that. So we got first recon. We got second recon. And we got 272 more prestige to go around. So, what I want to spend that on? Well, I think first of all we should get one infantry unit. And we can't get a brand carrier to go along with it, but I'm just not gonna do that for now. We just have first infantry for now, and then we have 134 more prestige points to put into something. We cannot get a cruiser. We cannot get another infantry unit either. Uh, what we can do is, well, we can get another Rolls Royce. And why not? I mean, they're pretty good. And in this scenario specifically, three of these can come in quite handy. So we're going to call it third recon. As soon as we start taking a few victory points, sir, and can afford getting another infantry unit, we will. Uh, now, real quick, if you look at the uh, unit shield here, or whatever you want to call it, where the strength of the unit is displayed, you can see a gold border around here. That means that it is a core unit that will be following through as you progress through the campaign. These units down here, however, does not have a gold border. They have a grey border. And they are just auxiliary units, specifically to be used in this scenario. So you might want to consider these as kind of throwaway, to try to put a little bit of a dent in the uh, enemy positions, where you expect taking a bit of casualties and you don't want to lose your core units, uh, which will in turn mean you losing either experience or prestige points. 
That being said, let's get the infantry in position here, and we'll uh, just uh, roll out with the Rolls Royces in the back here, and uh, we'll get to this mission. We can deploy six units, we can however not afford that many units. The artillery is quite expensive, but quite good to have. So we're going to move it in here, and we'll start opening up a barrage on these guys here, and let's see what comes from that. We killed one, and we stunned three. So if you look here next to this heart, which is the hit points of the unit, you see a 4 minus 3 in blue. That minus is how many units will be uh, suppressed and not be able to fight in the next combat this turn. After the engagement is over, this will reset and it will no longer be suppressed. Uh, so we have 3 units suppressed in there, that should be good enough for us to take on with our infantry. Yeah, fantastic, no casualties, and we crushed them. And from uh, one kill and four suppressed, we gain 20 experience on the artillery. I find artillery can quickly snowball with experience as they're in the back line and they don't necessarily take that many casualties if you uh, play them in a sustainable way. I'm gonna move these guys in here. Now, generally you don't want to move lorries up front, but I'm, I know what's coming up here, so I know that we can safely do that. And we're gonna move the uh, scout units there, or the recon units around to attack this position. I know what's there, there's one infantry and one artillery, there's an anti-tank gun here, infantry there, infantry there, two infantry here and one artillery. So, uh, yeah, I've played this scenario quite a few times, you could say. Uh, either way, we're gonna just kinda keep pushing around here. I know this artillery has a range of two, so we can safely bypass it by going around here. And there we see it. So I'm hoping to get uh, three Rolls Royces on it at the same time to get a mass attack effect going and then just destroy it and then we'll circle this guy with a mass attack and take him out and then keep flanking around and as we move in here well we're not quite ready to attack just yet uh, I think we're gonna send this guy down here I mean that sends him between these two units and they could attack us but if they do this is an auxiliary unit and we have this artillery behind them so they can support if these guys are being attacked. Now we're going to move this infantry a little bit closer. Same with this artillery. And if you look on the right side here again, you see this shovel. This indicates entrenchment. And if we uh, click, control click here, uh, you'll see entrenchment plus 10. Well, that's against artillery. Never mind, that doesn't prove my point. But uh, okay, we actually took out one and suppressed two. We can probably start attacking with our auxiliary infantry unit here, just to soften up this for the next turn's attack. Although we can also wait a little bit with it, because I want my gold, like my core units to be getting the experience, not the auxiliary units. Uh, because we're not going to keep that experience. So, uh, yeah, we'll do it this way. Uh, just hold off for now, and we're going to throw another artillery strike at them. And artillery strikes, every time you hit an entrenched position once, you will remove one entrenchment. So now two are suppressed here, and are down from five to four entrenchment. It will now go down to three, and we've taken out one unit and suppressed the entirety of that uh, position. So they can't fight back, so let's just attack them. That did absolutely nothing, uh, but that's just how it is sometimes. We'll just, uh, we'll just wait for next turn. It, we're not in any hurry, so it's, it's all good. And we're gonna surround this artillery piece over here. We're not getting all three Rolls Royces on him in the first turn here, but it should be good enough, I guess. Oh, rugged defense. Yeah, so entrenched units have a rugged defense chance. We can look at the combat results here. We have a 20% chance for rugged defense, which... Well, obviously it's a better defense than they would normally put up. But that being said, let's attack again. We dealt five casualties to it, and it's down at two. We have taken none ourselves so far. We have 18 turns. It's a fairly easy, uh, easy scenario, so we can just take our time here. We don't really need to rush or stress or anything. Oh, now suddenly we take uh, casualties. Hmm. Oh well then. I mean, it is it is RNG. Right, so we're waiting for next turn before starting to attack this, so we have the mass attack bonus. As you can see, its entrenchment is 7, and same here. It goes up, I think, 2 per turn if you're in a trench like this. 
And, uh, well, we're just gonna keep pummeling these guys with artillery. One suppressed. We'll see what happens. Maybe we can suppress more. Two suppressed. Ah, uh, we'll attack anyway, though. The entrenchment is down to two. The three of these units will be defending. Not extremely effective. And I think, honestly, just to speed things up, we'll attack with the auxiliary units now to finish them off, hopefully. There we go. Took a little bit of casualties on the auxiliary units, which is completely fine, as we do not particularly care about that. Now we move on to the next turn. And start engaging here. I'll start with the people that are actually experienced. Uh, so we have the experience bonus to attack and defense when we open up on these guys. Alright, we took out one for no casualties ourselves. Three for nothing. We're doing very good here. Huh? Two left, maybe we can finish them. Not quite, but they didn't fight back, so uh, we're all good. We have one unit left here to deal with. This guy here should be able to do that alone. So we can then start moving these units in towards other stuff over here. We'll start up uh, we'll start opening up with the auxiliary artillery on this guy. And we've suppressed four. I think we open up with the uh, three will be fighting back. Let's check the control click to see what uh, might happen. Rugged defense chance, 16%. Uh, 16%. We have four effective attack against the effective defense of nine. The effective attack is two, though, to our effective defense eight. So the prediction says we're not going to lose anything. And the prediction was right. Since I want more experience on my infantry and artillery, we're going to wait until the next turn before we keep pushing that position. And this should hopefully take this guy out now. Rugged defense. Not what we want to see, but it's only one unit, and... Uh, well, we have taken the victory location. But now, let's tear up these supply dumps. And there's an anti-tank unit over there that we want to... Not attack with any armored units, if we can avoid it. So these guys are fully suppressed, and we go in. Two damage. Well, we can finish them maybe with the Rolls Royce, actually. Not quite. If you press C, you can see um, some casualty counts. No, uh, this is what I want to see, actually. Uh, you can see the battle histories if you right-click and see what kind of units they've been killing. And this is just like a me thing. You don't really need to worry about this, but I like to finish off units as much as I can with my... Uh, with my core units, because then it will be added to the battle history over here that they finished off the unit. So we're just gonna leave this, um, now we're gonna send this dude over here further ahead for now, towards an anti-tank gun that is somewhere around here. It's gonna be holding in position, so we can just move in the infantry and everything. It's all gonna be good. Let's see, there it is on that uh, victory point. And we'll just have these guys here ready to take on this and get the victory point next turn. Also, when destroying all the supply dumps, we'll get some extra prestige as well. Now, we just open up with the uh, auxiliary artillery. Uh, the first artillery strikes tend to do less damage than uh, the follow-up ones. As you can see, we because now they're suppressed and such, and now we did damage, they're fully suppressed. So we can actually attack this anti-tank unit with an armored unit. And completely obliterate it. Fantastic. We'll take the uh, victory location here. And uh, maybe we can deal with these guys with the infantry. Generally it is better to attack trenches with infantry than armored units. For obvious reasons I would say. Um, a tank couldn't really maneuver into a trench and fight effectively as much as a person could. However, now we have 163 prestige, so what we are going to do is get another infantry. We just have to put them in on foot, but that's fine. I'm going to call it second infantry. And they will join the fray soon enough. And we're going to keep putting pressure on these uh, supply dumps there. Uh, well, I mean, the stationary stuff, so yeah. <laughs> not much they can do anyway, but we're not going to be using our... Uh, Auxiliary units to take on these. It's free experience to attack them, and we do not want to give free experience to units that we are not bringing with us in upcoming missions.
Oh, I blast this a little bit. Maybe attack it with the artillery as well. Oh no, let's not do that actually. So the spotting range of this infantry is 2, which is a little bit troublesome in, in regards to this artillery here having a range of 2. So we'll try to keep our units outside of the range of this artillery. Everything here is just going to be stationary. I don't think I've ever seen it move. Uh, but either way, we're going to move in our artillery. We uh, sell our infantry, and we still have plenty of time to do what we want to do. And there we go. Um, right, well... Let's move that guy over there. And this infantry here in a little bit. We can just start pummeling this. Potentially we can kill something, so we might as well try, I suppose. It's probably not going to be effective, though, as it wasn't, but... I mean, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. I think that's a pretty good mentality, because it's very true. You do miss 100% shot of the shots you don't take. Um, Alright, we're going to attack this again. With our recon unit, and then move our recon unit in a little bit. Also, we'll move in this recon unit a little bit towards the enemy artillery here, which we will bombard a little bit. Just to put some suppression on them. And then we'll attack them. Good, we have reduced our strength quite substantially there with 3 out of 8. And we are going to move our artillery, uh, sorry, our infantry further in. We're not going to be attacking these guys just yet, but we are putting damage onto their uh, entrenchment. So as you can see, this uh, group here has an entrenchment value of 9, and these guys have an entrenchment value of 6. Uh, from us having bombarded them a little bit with artillery and such. So our auxiliary artillery took the artillery strike from this guy, which is absolutely no problem. We'll hold this guy in and hopefully finish the artillery. Not quite, but uh, we'll get there. Let's see if these guys can do it. Uh, not quite. Okay then. Well, okay. Maybe this guy can do it. Oh no, I can't even get out there. Well, maybe he can if we take out the supply belt. For eliminating the supply dump, we've been awarded with uh, additional prestige. And there we go. I'm gonna move this uh, over like such. So we can support the, this artillery is out of ammunition. So if anyone attacks any units adjacent to it, it cannot support them until uh, it has more ammunition. There we go. This artillery is done for. And we're gonna just kind of circle these guys a little bit. Not sure these guys will even get to fight, but that's okay. Uh, we're still not going to attack these guys. We'll uh, spend a turn on resupplying and such. Good to be, um, uh, yeah, prepared ahead of time with the uh, ammunition count and such, rather than being a little bit too late with it. Either way, everything is, uh, you know, you don't want to go on down onto the red and then you get attacked because then you have to defend yourself with... Well, no ammunition, and that usually doesn't end so well. Seemingly, uh... Is this new? Supply unit, ammo plus three. I thought it used to be that uh, when you don't have any enemy units around you and you supply, then you get full supply. Is this from the difficulty, or how they changed this, or... I haven't heard any mention of that, but okay... Either way, we are now going to let loose with the resupplied artillery, which seemingly have been resupplied to the full extent. That one has at least, not this one. The auxiliary has been fully resupplied, but not the core one. Hmm. That's kind of weird. Either way, we move the infantry around a little bit like this. So they have artillery uh, support should they be attacked, and we attack with our infantry and take no casualties fantastic and uh, well let's just swarm this guy all right we'll put some more mass attack we could have done this earlier and it would have been better but uh, three entrenchment i think i mean prediction is we're losing nothing and they lose two so let's go yeah that worked out Oh, wow, that is early for a battle hero. Holy crap, and plus two attack? This is really good. 
This that, that's a fairly good battle hero. And to get it on the second scenario? I don't think that's ever happened to me before. Had he made changes to the game or something? What the hell? Plus two attack. That is huge. So this this guy. <laughs> so it says three soft attack and three hard attack, right? But this guy is 200 experience. And every 100 experience cakes on plus... Every 100 experience gives plus one defense and plus one attack. So from experience... He's a 5 attacker on both of these, and five, or, uh, 8 ground defense, but he's got 8 ground defense, and 7 soft and hard attack. Are you aware of how good that is? This unit is strong as heck right now. And there we go, that's, that's why I like to uh, have a little bit shorter names for my units. So now you can see here real quick, like A2, and now I know. Ah, plus 2 attack on this one. Hell, we'll keep going, maybe we can get some more battle heroes. Not taking any casualties, I'm liking it. Oh, rugged defense, that could change that. Yeah, okay, well, first recon took one casualty. But they surrendered, so it's all good. It was uh, worth it, I would argue. And either way, we're gonna not use the auxiliary unit. This has been very good. We've taken, what, two casualties on this, uh, on our core forces. And other than that, just simply none. So that is really good. The auxiliary infantry can just kind of... Yeah, we'll send them over there. Maybe the enemy decides to attack and waste some ammo. It doesn't really matter if we lose that, so... Uh, we're going to fully surround this remaining position here. And we will... Uh, bombard with artillery. I guess we could just keep attacking. Second infantry doesn't have... Like, I don't want to take casualties on the first infantry. They're already... Uh, up one experience. And you know what? We don't need to attack. We we have five more turns to finish these guys. Let's just take... Uh, and there we go. They used some uh, ammunition to attack there. Which is what I was hoping to achieve by doing that. Actually, they have six out of seven ammunition still left. So it, it might not have been very effective anyway. But every, every time they attack or get attacked, they will expend one ammunition. We're not doing much more than just uh, taking away entrenchment right now. But that's fine. We got time and we'll just take the time and use it. And, uh, until we get like a few of them suppressed and whatnot. And can actually have a fairly low, or well, a low casualty attack going. Or with a good chance to score a lot of damage. So we're going to resupply this now. And that brings it up to full ammo. Okay, so I don't know why it didn't last time. I don't know, there must be some mechanic I'm missing. Alright, we took out one of them. The entrenchment is four. We can attack with the auxiliaries, but uh, let's not, because I don't want them to have the experience. Ah, uh, well, maybe let us. Just to uh, just to speed this process up. Okay, they took two casualties. Don't really care. Also, they diminished the uh, entrenchment values of the enemy here, and the enemy is now attacking them again. Okay, they're almost uh, completely depleted, but that shouldn't be a problem. I think we'll be able to finish them this turn here without any problem. And let's see. Well, two entrenchment. We'll attack with this, uh, this unit here. Oh, they're doing a little bit too much damage. I just wanted to remove entrenchment value. Unfortunate. Who do I want to have this experience that's sir? Um, well, maybe third recon can go for it. Possibly they can get the battle here. Who knows? Probably not, though. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I am very happy with the uh, results of this. Battle history. Uh, Brian Moore, attack plus two. I mean, hello. That's extremely good. Plus two attack already. This is one hell of a beefy unit now. Seven attack, effective attack. On both tanks and infantry. With the uh, experience, of course. Uh, yeah. I I would call this mission a win. Holy crap. <laughs> Let's move on. Uh, yep. And triumph. And so, brilliantly done. Fort Capuzzo has fallen and the Italians are sent packing. We could not have expected a better outcome. Yeah, damn right we couldn't. Holy crap. I urge you, however, to prepare for a counterattack. 
The Italians really must respond to this humiliation quickly and with substantial force. Well, we'll deal with that in the next episode. I'd like to say thank you for watching. And I would appreciate if you would maybe consider leaving a like on the video if you did in fact enjoy it. And maybe even subscribing if you want to see more Pencil Core related content in the future. And other gaming uh, content. Uh, I'll be playing a lot of games kind of like this. Uh, and if you'd like my... Today, my YouTube channel is two months old. So, I haven't really got that much stuff out yet. But in the future... There will be more, a lot more. In two months, I've put out over uh, 200 videos, so you could say I'm churning them out like crazy. Now, does that speak to the quality of my content? Maybe. I'll leave that up to you to decide, though. So, yeah, I mean, I have more, more like, reviews and, like, more... Uh, what, what can I say? Um, Labor-intensive videos in the works. I'm working on some scripts and such, but... I'm just doing a little bit here and there. It's a lot easier to make these let's play type videos, of course. So, uh, But there will be more content. I, I have some plans for the future, is what I'm saying. So, you know, if you subscribe, you can be a part of that. You can even be a part of that without subscribing by just checking in every now and then. Uh, but either way, yeah. Have a good one. And you can catch me in the next one. Peace out.